This is a Steam Deck, fantastic little device used by gamers, but that's not the reason I like it. What I'm actually doing here is running Kali Linux on the Steam Deck. This is a live boot of Kali Linux. Live boot can be used on many devices, including the Steam Deck. But what's really nice about the Steam Deck is it has a built-in Wi-Fi adapter that supports monitoring mode and packet injection. So I can attack Wi-Fi networks using the Steam Deck. And notice pseudo Wi-Fi, press A, and Wi-Fi is now starting, and it'll scan for Wi-Fi networks, which I can then attack. Now it's probably gonna be a lot easier to connect a physical keyboard to the Steam Deck as well as a mouse. In this example, I've connected the Steam Deck to a dock, in this case, a Ugreen dock, and then I've connected the keyboard and mouse and internet connection to the dock. Makes things a lot easier because I can simply move this mouse, obviously, and then I can use the Steam Deck just like I would a normal computer. So as an example, I've opened up a terminal and what I can do is use the command sudo Wi-Fi, and I'll use kill here as an option just to kill any conflicting processes. And what that does now is run Wi-Fi and discovers Wi-Fi networks. In this example, I'm gonna attack Wi-Fi network four, the TP-Link network. That's this little router over here. As always, only attack networks that you own or have permission to attack. I've given myself permission to attack this network. So I'm gonna select four. Various attacks are run using Wi-Fi. I'll stop the PMKID attack by pressing Control C. You see to continue. Now it's trying to do a handshake capture. So what I'll do on this phone is connect it to that Wi-Fi network. So it's connecting, and as you can see there, it's captured the handshake and has actually cracked it already. In this example, the password used was a really bad password, Spider-Man. Don't use bad passwords like that on Wi-Fi networks. But I've shown you now how I can run Wi-Fi on the Steam Deck. The built-in Wi-Fi card in the Steam Deck supports monitoring and injection mode, as I've demonstrated. So if I cat the cracked JSON file, you can see the SSID, you can see the password used for the Wi-Fi network. And I'll just run it again, just to show you how easy it is. So I'll remove the cracked file, ls here, cdhs, ls, there's the captured handshake. So I'll remove that as well. So remove that handshake, go back to my home directory. So ls here, and then sudo Wi-Fi kill again, once again, capturing various Wi-Fi networks. In this example, I'm going to select two. That's once again, the TP-Link network can run various attacks. So you could let the PMKID attack run, but I'm gonna cancel that, press C to continue. Now it's trying to capture a handshake. So what I'll do is enable the Wi-Fi on this phone again, connect to the Wi-Fi network. There you go, it's captured the handshake. So notice here, it's listening for the handshake, then captures it. A message I always get on these videos is this is WPA. No one uses WPA anymore. Wi-Fi shows WPA, but this network is actually using WPA2. So it's not WPA, it's WPA2. So it captures the handshake, saves a copy of the handshake, and then tries to crack it. So you can see busy cracking it here, running air crack NG, cracking the password. And there you go, got it, Spider-Man. Once again, access point name, BSSID, Encryption is WPA2, even though it shows WPA here. Password is this. So the Steam Deck is a great little device. Again, you can use a mouse, you can use a keyboard connected to that. You can extend the functionality of the Steam Deck by using a dock like I've done here. Or you could simply just carry it around and use the onboard keyboard as I've demonstrated. Much more difficult, however. You don't need a deck. You could plug the keyboard directly into the Steam Deck if you wanted to. So as an example, I'll unplug that. I'm simply using a Raspberry Pi keyboard here and I could plug that directly in. So now I'd use the onboard mouse, but I've got the keyboard connected. And once again, I could use commands such as ls, cat, cracked, json, and see the information and then exit. So I think it's a lot easier to use a dock. Then you can have multiple devices connected, much easier to use mouse and keyboard as well as power the device at the same time. So the dock is busy powering the Steam Deck here. But if you want to be more stealthy, you could just use the Steam Deck with no extra devices connected or perhaps use a Bluetooth keyboard or something to connect to the Steam Deck so that people can't see what you're doing. I really want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Do you know how technology works? As an example, how strong passwords work? How should companies store your passwords? So as an example, if you log into a website, is that password stored in a database as clear text? Hopefully not. 
Hopefully it's stored as a hash of the password. But what is a hash of a password? Here are some examples. If I set my password to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, really bad idea, that is gonna be the hash of the password. Or let's change the password. If I set it to password again, a really bad idea, that's the hash of that password. Or random characters or letters, that's the hash of that password. Notice how you're learning the basics of passwords and then you're learning about what a hash function is. A hash function is an algorithm that takes one string of characters and outputs another called a hash. But it's really important to understand that a hash algorithm is irreversible. You cannot take the hash and get the original data. So how does the website actually check when you log in that you are entering the correct password? Well, what it does is it applies the hash algorithm to the password you entered and then compares that to the stored hash password. Notice how interactive this training is. Notice how they're teaching you the basics and then taking you to more complex scenarios. So as an example, teaching you why this is a really bad password and teaching you about password strength. Now you can try everything on Brilliant for free for 30 days. Use my link below, brilliant.org forward slash David Bumble. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. You can really change your life through education. And I really wanna thank Brilliant for doing that, but also for supporting my channel. Now to set this up, what you need is a laptop. In this example, I'm using Windows 11. You need an SD card reader. My laptop has one built in. You need an SD card that's at least 16 gig in size. This is 128 gig. And obviously you need a Steam Deck. So what I'm gonna do is take this SD card and insert it into my laptop. That's inserted now. But what we need to do is download Kali Linux. So on the Kali Linux website, kali.org, click on download. And what you're gonna download here is the live boot. We're gonna download Kali 2024.1. It's about four gig in size, they tell us. So that's now downloading. Now, when you go to the Kali website, there may be a later release than this one. Simply download the latest release of Kali and then follow the steps that I'm showing you in this video. While that downloads, I'm gonna download Etcher. So go to the Etcher website. And by the way, my team and I have created a PDF, which I've linked below, that shows you all of these steps. So if you wanna follow a document rather than watching a video, you can use that link below. But I'm gonna show you all the steps in this video. So I'm gonna download Etcher. In my example, I'm gonna download the portable version for Windows and click save to save it. Now I've actually downloaded these files already in anticipation for this video. So rather than waiting for all the files to download, I'm simply gonna use the downloaded files. So here's Etcher. Now in our tests, we found that this varies. To be safe, you may wanna run this as administrator. You could just double click and run it, but you may have issues with the file. So if you do have issues, run it as an administrator. The SD card that we're using is 128 gig card. We're gonna flash from file. And in my example, I'm gonna select the downloaded file, Kali Linux 2024.1. Again, you may have a later release than this, so select that version, so it's a live ISO image. I'm gonna click open, and then I'm gonna simply click flash. That image is now flashed to the SD card. You can see here, it's got an ETA of about a minute and 50 seconds. So again, the process is fairly simple. What you're gonna do is go to the Kali website, download the live boot image. So select the latest release and download that. Go to the Etcher website, download Etcher. Various options are available, including installing it, but we simply used the portable version, and then you point to that file in Etcher and allow it to flash to the SD card. I'm gonna speed up the video at this point. The software is gonna be flashed, and then it's gonna be verified. And once that's done, you can insert it into the Steam Deck and boot off the file. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay, so there you go, Flash is completed. So we can close the software down and then eject the SD card. So I'll eject that. So it's now safe to remove. So there you go, I've now got Kali installed on this 128 gig SD card. So what I'll do on the Steam Deck is simply turn it off. So there you go. And then what I'll do is pop out this SD card this was a 64 gig SD card and I'll pop in the new one. So that's now inserted. Okay, so before you turn it on, you need to hold the plus button and keep that down and then press the power on. So keep the plus button depressed and then press the power button quickly. And then what you'll see is a menu like this. And then what I'll be able to do is move to boot manager and then press A to select that. 
move down to SD card, 128 gig SD card, and then press A to boot off that. And notice we've got Kali Live Boot here, so press A to boot using Live Boot. Okay, so there you go, it's booted, but as you can see, it's not looking right. So I'm gonna use the mouse to go to the menu and then press the button on the back right here to select the menu. And then I'm gonna go to settings, select display, and then I'm gonna select rotation and we're gonna select right and then click apply. And notice now it looks a lot better. So I can keep this configuration and then close the menu. And there you go, I've now got Kali working on the device. Now something you may encounter here is, okay, that's great, but how do I get a terminal up? So I'm gonna to go to terminal emulator. Very hard to work this way. It's probably something that you don't wanna do. So what you can do is go to the menu again and then go to all applications and then just scroll down. So I'm gonna simply scroll down and I'm gonna select onboard. And what that does, is gives me a keyboard. So this is one way to get commands, but it's obviously not very easy to do. You probably wanna insert a keyboard. So either use a Bluetooth keyboard or insert a keyboard into the USB-C port on the Steam Deck. But what I've done here is type the command sudo wifi, and then I could press A to run it. I'll just make the screen a bit bigger here. And notice sudo wifi, press A, and wifi is now starting, and it'll scan for Wi-Fi networks, which I can then attack. But there you go, I've now shown you how to install Kali Linux on a Steam Deck. Now, if you finished using it, you can simply power this off. Kali shuts down, pull out the SD card, and then you can just boot normally on the Steam Deck. And there you go. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Kali Linux can be run on many, many devices, including a Steam Deck, including phones, including computers and so forth. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best.